basically the owner and founder of a sauce brand called Shemi's Singapore Fine Food. And the business is now two years old, but I've been in the industry for 12 years, uh, previously having owned a cooking school called Shemi's Cooking School. And that was in business for 11 years. I closed it uh, middle of last year. And uh, I first started my career about 12, 13 years ago uh, by being a cookbook author, relaunching my grandmother's cookbook. Her book was called Mrs. Lee's Cookbook, and it's now relaunched to uh, the new Mrs. Lee's Cookbook. Well, I think what fundamentally keeps me going is passion. I have a lot of passion for what I do, and I think that's what I would advise anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur. Um, but passion alone is not enough. I think you need to have a lot of structure and you have to sustain what you do, your, your passion as well as your business. I think sometimes fear, but in a good way, it motivates myself and my team to keep pushing into new avenues. The new things we have that are about to happen are launch of new sauces and that should come to the market by Christmas, we hope. We're moving more into Singapore souvenirs because as a Singapore brand that is strongly into straits heritage or Singapore heritage, you know, we'll come up with a beautiful box set that's suitable for corporates and Singapore souvenirs. So the most exciting plan is in the month of August, um, I have a partnership with Tangs and they have basically appointed uh, myself and my brand to be in partnership with them. We will basically have a whole series of events including chilli tasting competition for sort of like a taste off of chilli putty as well as a chilli tasting bar. It will be a beautifully designed bar where customers will come and taste all the chilies to find out about chilies, discover if they like the flavour of it, uh, what to eat it with. I think the critical thing is that Singapore's oldest department store, um, which handpicks each of the products that they sell because they must believe in it and love what the product says, uh, the brand story and what it stands for, they've decided that they really like my uh, product. Creating a product, it really is an extension, in this case, of myself. So uh, my taste level in food, in my ideas of what design uh, should be, is all embodied in the product in the jar. Um, and so I think, you know, this really appeals to a lot of people, especially of this generation. You could call them millennials or, um, I mean, I have some older staff who also like the idea that what we do is such an extension of what uh, my staff feel. So right now we're going through a rebranding um, uh, exercise and I get everyone in my office to make comments on the design before we go into production, into printing. So these are some things that you're able to uh, realise more the immediacy of your feedback and your input uh, in comparison with working for a large institution where maybe you're a smaller widget in a larger missionary. I would say my expectations were met and the students did a good job. The question was uh, what, where, how, who, um, why are my customers buying what they're buying? Um, it was basically a very uh, a consumer study or to understand my product. And um, I think for the uh, level that the SMU students were at, it was just pitched at the right level. There was enough complexity in the case study for them to feel challenged as well as a mentor to guide and oversee them. Um, but it wasn't too much complexity that it would require them to be MBA students or professionals. So I would say it was the right match of um, skills and expectations. Yes, there has been a direct impact and translation and immediate implementation of the case study conclusion into my brand. Um, I had informed SMU and the students when we first met that this was not just a theoretical exercise but there would be an immediate uh, practical um, implementation uh, because my brand uh, is going through a brand audit um, which is basically to, to tighten up and crystallise the label. So during this consumer study, one of the things we did was to uh, look at the communication of the label uh, with customers. And so that has is an immediate impact. Uh, on a larger scheme of things, I think their recommendation was um, for me to really uh, tell the Singapore food heritage story through my brand, uh, which is the heart and soul of my brand, as well as um, some, one of our core beliefs and uh, a key component in the brand story. And so independently, the SMU students came to that conclusion and the end result was a more an affirmation of um, a conclusion that I myself had come to than the a case study had come to and it was a convergence and affirmation. 
Yeah, so we're going into e-commerce in a big way because that's a platform we own. So not only transacting, selling directly, so people can buy online from shemi.com and we will directly uh, mail to them. We're doing island-wide right now. I'm sure um, global will matter, uh, will happen in a matter of time. Uh, more than that, we're integrating it with social media so they can go to our Facebook, YouTube channel and um, Instagram and find lots of video content and free recipes and even though I'm a cookbook author, I used to sell my cookbook, now I'm creating a lot of original content and providing it for free on my website so people can um, have free recipes as well as um, watch uh, videos of how to use the sauces. So um, we want them to use it as an ingredient uh, which is to you know open a jar of sauce, add it to a dish and you can make say Singapore chili crab sauce uh, using my chili chuka. So there's a multitude and multiple ways of using my sauce in cooking and as a condiment and many other ways. So we're pushing that platform.